Okay, so now we're going to do range of motion measurements for trunk side bending or lateral flexion, whichever one you want to call it. Um, trunk side bending occurs in the frontal plane. When we use our tape measure, there's no normal value, but when we use our goniometer, the normal value is 0 to 35 degrees, and the end feel is firm. Um, the patient position that she should be standing with her shoes off, um, her feet are going to be shoulder width apart, and let's see. Okay, and the instructions are, I want you to slide, we'll go to the right, so I'm going to have you slide your, no, 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 we're going towards your left. Okay, so I want you to slide your left hand down your leg like this as far as you can. And come on back up. There are a couple things we don't want to see. We don't want to see that the person is lifting up the contralateral foot. I don't know, can you see that, Monica? Mm -hmm. We don't want to see them doing that. And then we also don't want to see them coming forward into too much flexion. We want purely a frontal plane motion. And then we also don't want to see too much bending of the ipsilateral side. So those are the compensatory motions that we're looking for. Um, so I'm going to have you do that motion again. So you'll bring your left hand down the side as far as you can go. And then if you relax your hand just to the side, I'm going from the distal end of her long finger perpendicular to the floor. And you can take a little break. And I use centimeters because that's more accurate. And I just read how many centimeters it took her to go from her fingertip to the floor. And then I'm going to do trunk side bending using a goniometer. So I'm going to have the patient remain. Actually, if you could take two big steps forward. Okay. So the patient is still standing, no shoes, feet shoulder width apart. Um, I'm going to have to palpate her S1 spinous process. So again, I'm coming in over her iliac crests, and I'm coming across, and that's approximately the L3, L4 junction. So if I go inferior to that, that's the first spinous process is L4. Inferior to that is L5, and then inferior to that is S1. And that's where my stationary, uh, sorry, that's where my fulcrum goes. My stationary arm is going to be perpendicular to the floor. And so I'm going to have the patient, Suzanne, can you do the same motion where you bring your left um, hand down your left leg? And then I'm going to line up my moving arm with C7 spinous process. And you can take a little break. And then I read from my goniometer where it started to where it ended up. And this goniometer is reading about 19 degrees. And so now we're going to move on and do trunk rotation range of motion. So for this, we're going to have the patient sit in a chair. And her feet are going to be on the floor, but her back is not supported by the chair. So yeah, she just moves up a couple of inches so that the back of the chair does not impede her range of motion. And for this one, we're going to have the patient cross her arms over her chest. For a trunk rotation, this occurs in the transverse plane, and the normal value is 0 to 45 degrees. Um, I, think that's, I think that's it. Okay, so I need to stand on a stool behind the, behind the patient. I'm going to have you look straight ahead at the wall. Uh, the fulcrum goes in the center of the cranial aspect of the head. The stationary arm is parallel to the imaginary line that, uh, that connects the two iliac crests, which is really hard to see. So I'm going to assume that the line that connects the two acromion processes is parallel to the line that connects the two iliac crests. So I'm going to line that up now, and I'm going to palpate the acromion processes so that I know that I'm looking at the right thing. And now what I'm doing is I'm actually lining up the, the arms with the tiles on the floor so that once she moves, I know that my stationary arm does not move and have something to um, visualize its you know, relative position for. So my instructions to the patient is, Suzanne, I want you to turn your whole body and look over to the right side. And if she compensates with too much cervical motion, it really doesn't matter because my um, goniometer alignment has taken that into account. And I'm moving my moving arm so that it is parallel with an imaginary line that connects the two acromion processes. And you can take a little break. So my moving arm started here, and it came down to about 41 degrees.